Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for October 9th, 2018. I'm your host, Gary Smith, and on today's show, we're going to talk with Coach Dunn about this past weekend's game at Clarion. Uh, we're going to talk about this upcoming week's opponent, the Gannon Golden Knights. We're going to look at scores and standings and schedules from around the PSAC. We're going to talk about some highlights, uh, homecoming activities, concerts, and all the fun that goes along uh, with homecoming week. But first of all, Coach, uh, uh, glad, glad you made it here today. I think that lightning delay just ended about 15 <laughs> minutes ago. So uh, have you ever been as a player or coach before involved in something uh, like that? And for those of you who don't know, on Saturday, uh, as the second quarter was starting, uh, lightning was spotted in Two hours later, uh, the second quarter resumed. But is that something you'd ever been a part of before? Yeah, you know, it, it's pretty common earlier in the season, you know, that, that you get those pop-up storms. And, and I have as a coach before, and it's kind of funny. We we had a very similar situation during preseason camp where once you go out on the field because the NCAA rules, you're only allowed to practice once a day. So once you start practice, you got to wait until, it, it, you know, you can get that practice in. And we actually had that during camp a couple times. So. When we went into the locker room, I talked talk to our team that, hey, we, we've done this before. We did this during preseason camp. No big deal. Let's relax. When it's time to go, we'll, we'll be ready to play again. And uh, that was uh, just one of those situations where I don't think anybody in the stands or anybody uh, was anticipating. Because I know driving up for us, we, you know, we looked at the weather, didn't really see anything. So maybe a chance or something, but nothing that, that crazy. But when you're in the locker room for the second time, because you figure you, you come out from the locker room, start the game first quarter. Then you go back in. I mean, what? How do you guys pass the time? Because yeah, we talked as a coaching staff. Probably the you know it was it was going to be third and two on about the 14 yard line. That was probably the most talked about play that we've ever had here at Cal U because we had two <laughs> hours to discuss what we were going to run the next play. Uh, but our our staff you know got together, talked about what was going on. We told our kids to relax, take your pads off, and and you know it was kind of interesting because you're. You know, when you're on the road in the PSAC, the, the locker rooms aren't the greatest of, uh, of locker rooms when you're on the road. But our kids did a good job. They kind of hung out and, and talked and, and had music playing. And, and so it, it was good. I, I was really proud of the way our guys came back and, and focused back in when we got out there. Because you never know. After a two-hour delay, you know, you never know how they're going to respond. And, I, you know, our guys, we do a period during practice where we, we just spot the ball and play. And that's what we told them, hey, we're going to spot the ball and, and we're going to go. And, and I thought our guys did a really good job of managing that. And Saturday's game was a pretty big game of the PSAC. Both teams uh, atop the PSAC. Clarion came into that game 4-1. and one. Um, and I know I hear coaches talk a lot, you know, about staying on schedule with drives and everything. And your team really stayed on schedule that first quarter. I think you scored on both your drives. And then uh, after the, you said the longest drive in Cal history, two and a half hours, finished that up to go up, uh, I think, 21-6 at that point. And uh, it never seemed like you guys were behind the eight ball. It just seemed like next play, next play, next play, advance, advance, advance. Yeah, I thought the offense did a good job coming out sharp and ready to go. I thought, you know, our offensive coaches did a nice job and had a good plan. And, and you know, we were on schedule. I wasn't necessarily happy with how we finished the game. You know, we talked to our guys. It's it's about playing the next play. We don't we don't look to the scoreboard. We don't look to the situation. We're going to play the next play as hard as we can. And we did a really good job for, you know, what, what may have been four hours. I don't know the, <laughs> the, the time. And then in the fourth quarter, I thought we got a little sloppy. So I talked to the team about that yesterday. That's something we've got to do a better job of. But, you know, our guys were, were prepared and, and played well for most, most of the game. And it seemed like on offense, every facet of the game was clicking. I mean, your running game was was moving the chains. And uh, Tyson Hill, I think, had probably, it seemed like he had 19 receptions in the first two quarters. Uh, and then you had um, Chad Livingston with a long touchdown pass. And it, it seemed like you were working a lot of guys in, um, and every guy that touched the ball was, was being productive. Yeah, we were being efficient. And I think, you know, it, it all starts with us on our run game. And once we can kind of get that rolling, and, you know, our receivers are doing a really nice job of, and, and know our quarterback is doing a really nice job of, of putting the ball where the read goes. And it's not, you know, hey, we're looking to Tyson or we're looking to Chad Livingston, you know. Uh, Craig Thompson had had some big mm -hmm. catches on on that second drive, and uh, you know obviously uh, Chad Livingston had a big touchdown pass. Noah was doing a really good job of distributing the ball where the, where his read takes him, and I think when we can do that and combine the running game, uh, that's when we're at our best, and, and we were able to do that Saturday. It was another game where uh, going back even the week before the IP game, the offensive line really came together. It didn't seem like. Uh, no, Mitchell was in any real distress back there, and that's got to be great for an offense because, hey, you know, your quarterback's going to stay clean, but buy some time for your, your weapons to do what they need to do. Yeah, offensive line's doing a really nice job protecting, and, and Clarion did some blitzes that, that you know, are, are exotic type blitzes. And, you know, they walk everybody up, cover everybody, cover everybody up, and play cover zero behind it. I thought on the first 
drive of the game, we, we handled that pretty good. We hit Tyson Hill on a couple catches versus that look and that blitz that we had prepared against. I thought in the fourth quarter, uh, or actually the third quarter, they did the same thing. We didn't handle it as well, so that's something that we've got to improve on is going back to, hey, this was our plan at the beginning of the week, sticking to the plan, and, and, and obviously had success with it early. Uh, but that's part of growing and developing. And, and I think the one thing about our offensive guys is we're getting better every week, and, and that's encouraging as a coach. You can see growth and improvement every week, uh, especially up front. Our guys are doing a really good job of keeping our quarterback clean and, and then you know, provided holes in the run game for, for our running backs. And on the other side of the ball, the defense, once again, playing takeaway. It seems like if you look every week uh, when we get the game notes and start preparing, you know, we got one of the things on the stats is plus minus. It seems like every week it's leaps and bounds. Two more turnovers uh, for your defensive fumble recovery and an interception on Saturday. And, you know, defensive line on, on the other side of the ball where, you know, your offensive line kept quarterback clean. Your defense line was seemed like they were permanently in the backfield of the Clarion offense for most of those six hours of football. Yeah, I, th I think that's the biggest difference right now. Our defense is creating turnovers. I think we had two interceptions. I think Brian Cook yeah, yeah. had one. Obviously, Lamont McFadden mm -hmm. had another one. And I said to him after after your game, well, we're not scoring touchdowns anymore. <laughs> you, you know, he but he, he was so mad that he didn't score on that play. You know, Lamont also had the blocked punt, which mm -hmm. was a, a big play in that game. And then we had a fumble recovery. I think that's the biggest difference between the beginning of the season and now is our defense is creating turnovers. Our special teams did a good job. I'm sure we're going to talk about that oh, on yeah. Saturday, creating field position. And really a good team win. When you can create turnovers, you can have some big plays on special teams and your offense efficient. You know, I think we're a tough team, a tough team when we can do those things, and we got to obviously continue to do that. Well, that block punt, I mean, any block kick or any special teams play seems like it's going to be a big change of momentum. But when that kick was blocked, that basically, you know, took all the wind out of that stadium on Saturday. Big homecoming crowd for, uh, for Claring, but as soon as that kick was blocked, I think they kind of knew that, A, that sets your offense up. I think it was inside the 30-yard line, and that's, you know, you're going to take those odds anytime. Yeah, it, it was really, really a big play for us. And I thought our special teams played well all, all day. Obviously, you had the block, the, the block punt, but you had a couple big punt, uh, kickoff returns. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek Haraway is doing a nice job kind of into that role. He was banged up at the beginning of the season and, and, and got out a couple of times, you know, to midfield or so. He had a big punt return as well um, that we had a penalty on to move this back a little bit, but it was still a nice return. Um, and then our, our field goal team made all our field goals. So, you know, special teams played really well. Coach Wilson does a fabulous job with those guys, and, and it was good to kind of see us grow in that area. I thought that was one area the past couple weeks where we had to continue to grow, and we definitely won the special teams battle this week. I'm not sure we could say that the, the previous weeks. And those kicks by Brian also broke. Those weren't chip shot field goals. The second one was, uh, I, I believe it was over 40-some yards, but the wind was swirling. And so, I mean, those are good kicks to make at any times, but especially coming down the stretch that you know you have someone that, you can count on to, to make those kicks under duress. Yeah, we, we got a lot of confidence in Brian, and it was funny that you know, we had a fourth down, and it would have been about a 46, 47 yard field goal, and I chose to go for it. Well, Brian was in my ear on the sideline. He's like, Coach, I can make it, I can make it. And I said, I know you can. At that point in the game, it was, it was late in the third quarter. We didn't want to take a, a chance of having a kick block because that would have given them momentum back. Um, so we, we elected to go for it, but we've got confidence that Brian can, can put it through the uprights from a pretty good distance. Well, that's enough talking about the game, and uh, we've convinced, we've condensed the seven or eight hours of football on Saturday down to about two minutes. Here's the highlights from Saturday's game, and after the break, you'll see highlights from last year's game against this week's opponent, the Gannon Golden Knights. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. On the right hash, hand the ball inside to Nelson Brown. Nelson Brown easily gets into the end zone. Walk and strike first here in this one. Takes the snap, does Mitchell. Mitchell off, looks off to his right to Craig Thompson. Craig Thompson, nice strong hands, pulls that ball in right at the goal line. By Jeff Clemens. Clemens is going to be taken down in the backfield as he looks like he may have fumbled on that sack attempt. It will be California football. Mitchell drops back, looks to his left to Tyson Hill. Dumps it down to Nelson Brown in the middle of the field. Nelson Brown trying to get to the end zone. Pulls defenders and gets into the end zone. Nelson Brown goes beast mode yet again and gets into the end zone for six points. Dropping back to pass, looking off to his right. There's a deep pass there to Chad Livingston. It is a perfect strike to Livingston. Good for a touchdown. What a pass there from Noah Mitchell. Kicks this one away. It looks right through the uprights. 
Off back to pass. Pressure coming in his face. Gets it across the middle. Intercepted by who else but Lamont McFadder. McFadder Fatter now at the 40, down to the 30. Makes a couple guys missing. Tackle down at the 26 yard line. Set the kick. Receives a snap. Kick is up. And the kick is good. Nick Grissom in the backfield. So we hand off to Grissom. Grissom pushes forward and into the end zone. How about that? Have yourself a touchdown, Nick Grissom. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. Saturdays are for the Vulcan. At Ohio Dominican, at Kutztown, at Chippensburg, Home versus Edinburgh, Colbo versus IUP, at Clarion, Homecoming versus Gannon, at Mercyhurst, Home versus Slippery Rock, at Seton Hill, Home versus Westchester. Catch all the action live on CUTV and WCAL. is just going to get this snap off. He's going to go throw. That's going to be intercepted. That's number seven, Lamont McFadder. McFadder will just easily prance his way into the end zone for the California touchdown. This one's going to be kept by Keith. Keith finds a hole. He's going to be tackled. And they're going to call this one a touchdown. He's going to get this one off. He has a few wide receivers. He's going to be pressured. He's going to scramble out to his right. He has a receiver open in the end zone. That's going to be a California touchdown. Tell your mom, pa, and brother-in-law. Here, fakes the handoff to Jalen Bell. He's going to go long to Smory. Or that's going to be Tom Green. Tom Green catches it and has a wide open field. One pass, one touchdown to Tom Green. And it's actually going to be a pass. Palka open. He's going to bump off a Vulcan defender, make his way into the end zone just like that. Brazil, his kick is up. Old Reliable comes out. Three wide receivers to his left, one to his right as well. He's going to go long. He has Smory. Smory jumps up. He grabs it over the Gannon defender. Three receivers to Keith's right. Jones in the backfield. They're going to go long again. He has a receiver. It's going to be caught over the shoulder. A very impressive catch for a Gannon touchdown. It's going to go to Jones. Jones puts his head down, but he is denied. The helmet's going to be off. The ball is going to be in the end zone. This is going to be a Golden Knights touchdown. On this third down, Michael Keir drops back. 
He has a few men in the end zone. He's going to go to Tom Green. Tom Green brings that one in for a Vulcans. Touchdown, Tom Green. Game is on the foot of number 46. Cartrell and he shanks it far right, way far right. That'll be the ball game. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. Uh, I'm Gary Smith, joined by Coach Dunn. And Coach, we just saw highlights uh, from last year's back and forth action uh, on the shores of Lake Erie and against this coming week's opponent, the Gannon Golden Knights. And it always seems, Coach, that Gannon is one of those teams that no matter the records, it's going to be either it's either going to be a close game or it's going to be a, a fireworks, both teams scoring. And, and last year the game wasn't decided to a block kick at the, at the very end of the game. Yeah, uh, you know, it's always – Gannon plays extremely hard, and it's always a tough game. You know, since I've been here two years ago, it was it was a tough game here, and then we go up there, and it was a battle all day long of big plays and big stops. And you know, they're they're a talented, talented team. They've got a lot of athletes, and and you know, they're I'm sure they're going to be ready for us. And coach, I know you've been watching film on them uh, probably since the second you got off the bus from Clarion. Um, but most of the fans only think they're one player. They're, they're running back Jones, who, who had a monster year last year. But uh, for those, you know, obviously there's more than that. Who else on their yeah, offense? Yeah, they, they, they've watch? got some nice receivers. They're, they got a big, big offensive line that, that likes to create holes. And, and obviously their game is, is they're going to give it to their running back. He's one of the premier running backs in the, in the country. Uh, I think he was second in a Harlan Hill Trophy running last year. And then when, when you overload the box to stop the run, they've got weapons outside that, that can hurt you. They're, they're very efficient. You know, their record, it doesn't indicate how good they are. They've been winning every game in the second half this year. They were beating Edinburgh by a couple of touchdowns. They were beating Kutztown by a couple of touchdowns. And for whatever reason, just haven't really finished off games. Uh, but they got that taste of victory last week against Seton Hill in a big win. The running back had a big day. And uh, they're, they're a dangerous offense. They gave us some trouble up there a year ago. Uh, you know, anytime you have a running back, it all starts with him. But they, they do a nice job offensively. And then you flip over to defensively, they're very aggressive style defense, very similar to us and how we run our defense. And they've got, you know, quality guys at, at each position. You know, the one of their defensive ends was a all-conference guy from a year ago that had, had a big game against us. Uh, their linebackers are very active, and, and, and they like to play man coverage in the secondary. So we're going to have to play our best football. We're going to have to be ready to go uh, come Saturday. And, Coach, I mean, this is homecoming, uh, your third homecoming as a coach of the Vulcans. It always seems like homecoming is a big, a big game. What do you have to tell your team to try and prepare? Because, I mean, there's so much that goes on in homecoming week that, you know, doesn't happen normally. It's just a lot of distractions and out there. Is it, you know, just – Head down, let's keep doing this. Yeah, you know, our, our guys understand what our preparation is. Our preparation doesn't change. It's, it's the same from week one to, to week 11. And, you know, it's about us being disciplined in what we do, showing up every day to work and get better. And I think that's one thing this team has done a really good job of is they come to work every day. And we've seen improvement every week. And we got to continue to make that improvement against a good Gannon team. But just limit the distractions. You know, enjoy homecoming. I, I want our guys to be a part of this campus community, and, and, and I want them to enjoy college. When they look back on their four years here, I want them to have a great experience. So enjoy homecoming, but put it in perspective, and, and let's take care of our business, whether it's in meetings, whether it's in practice, and, and then, you know, obviously enjoy it. And so Coach, obviously you played here. How special is it for you now as a former player to, you know, homecoming week to, to lead the team um, like you have for the past couple of years? Is it a little extra juice since I'm sure you have people coming back that you might not have seen for a while? Or um, what, what's that like as a former yeah, it's, player? Yeah, it, it's great. Obviously, you, you want to be involved in homecoming. And, and I can't thank our alumni enough from how they support us to, you know, our golf hiding in the spring to the, the football alumni tailgate that they have every week. But homecoming is special. You know, you're going to have a lot of guys back. I know a lot of the guys that – that I played with are coming back. Um, so it is special to see old faces. And, you know, you always end up on homecoming running into somebody you didn't know you were going to see. So it is, you know, special for me to be here. My wife is obviously very involved in homecoming and runs the parade. Um, so it's, it, it's a good time. It's a good family atmosphere. Obviously this year, you know, the administration has done a tremendous job of promoting homecoming. We're going to have a concert in, in the parking lot. Lone Star is going to be in concert after the football game. So it's, it's a special day to, to celebrate our university. And it's going to be a great day. So come on down to Cal U and spend the entire day. The parade will start at noon. As Coach said, the game's at three. So let's get all the red and black in the stands. And I tell you what, uh, talk about the fans. They, like, 
the fans have been traveling pretty well since we've had, I think, 17 road games this year. <laughs> um, but they stuck through that, that rain delay. I noticed on the far side, you know, the band made the trip this week, which is a great, I mean, atmosphere whenever the band's able to make the trip. And also, the, I mean, all the, I didn't see any people that were in the first, uh, before the first rain delay. It seemed like there was the exact amount of people on that side. Because that, that's just great for you and your team to, to see that. Yeah, I tell you what, it, it's special on the road, especially when our band goes with us, you know, and, and you know, uh, Frank Stutter does a great job with them, and, and our team has a great relationship with the band. So to have them with us is great. We had some administrators there. You know, President Jones made the trip with us with Dr. Barnhart and Dr. Bennington, and, and when you can get, you know, the president of the university to travel with a football team on the road, that's that's special too, and our guys appreciate that. So you know, we have a great parent following, and we had some alumni there. So it, it was a special day, and it's 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 great to see the, the support that our guys are getting, and they they sure appreciate it. And let's take a look back after we've talked about everything there can be about. Uh, fans making traveling uh, on the road and everything like that. Let's take a look and put a ribbon on this past week's games with the scoreboard um, on the East and West. Another week of divisional play. See, of course, California over Clarion 41-27. Uh, and a barn burn. We were keeping tabs on this uh, in the press box. Slippery Rock uh, over Indiana 30-27. to That game was going back and forth until the, the last two or three minutes of the ball game. Uh, we got the final update and then it went final. Uh, so that's a big win. Um, Absolutely. Then Seton Hill against Gaines. See, Gannon got that win uh, at home against Seton Hill by 20, 48 to 28. And then um, this kind of this score, Mercer's over Edinburgh. The, not that the result, but just that you know the, it was a 24 to six win. So Mercer's doing what Mercer's does. Seems like they get stronger as the year goes on. Yeah, I, I think that was you know we talked last week about the, the IUP Slippery Rock mm -hmm. game and Mercy Hurst. Uh, Edinburgh game. Well, you and called it. You, know, you called I, them both. <laughs> I, well, I tell you, they, uh, you know, I, I got a lot of respect for Mercy Irish. They play hard, and, and they're definitely a team that you better be ready to play. And switching over to the PSAC, we see Millersville uh, beating Lock Haven at Lock Haven 24-6. Uh, Shippensburg traveling, or excuse me, at home against LIE Post, uh, losing 41-39. to uh, Westchester and Bloomsburg, that was another game that was back and forth throughout most of the afternoon before Westchester uh, came back down in the fourth quarter and went 17-14, and then uh, a, cl a close one, Kutztown uh, barely nipping East Stroudsburg, 35 to 33. So some close games uh, yeah. this weekend in the PSAC. As you've always said, you know, any given any yeah. given Saturday. Every, every week, you know, that's that's you know the Westchester. Obviously, that's a big win that keeps them unbeaten, and then the same for Kutztown. So I'm not sure when those two teams play. We might have it on the next graphic, but that's going to be a good game out east. Well, a couple graphics now. We got the standings first. Let's take a look uh, how it shakes out. Cal and Slippery Rock undefeated at top, but Slippery Rock. 5-1, uh, Cal 4-2. But look at all those 4 and 2s on the right side. Just a strong, strong PSAC West. So we Slippery Rock, Cal, Clarion, Edinburgh, Indiana, Mercer, Gannon, and Seton Hill. So um, at this point in the season, right right where you want to be with a zero uh, next year uh, losses in conference. Yeah, so. we worry about the next game, not the previous one. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the answer. <laughs> yeah, you guys know how I feel about these graphics. So. Well, let's take a look at the, the East standings real quick. And uh, Westchester and Kutztown, uh, both undefeated. And of course, there's going to be some um, numbers that don't add up on the left side because of Cheney not having football this year. So Westchester 3-0, Quitstown 2-0, both 6-0, 5-0. So that appears that, you know, that they're on a collision course uh, for the East. Now let's take a look at the schedule uh, for this weekend. Um, everything in the afternoon this weekend. So if you're a football fan, you have a, about a five-hour window between noon and uh, 6 o'clock uh, to watch football. Lightning delays, uh, you never know what's going to happen, so that could extend the game. But Clarion at Indiana, uh, Mercerist at Seton Hill, Ship at Millersville, Edinburgh at Slippery Rock, those will start the 2 o'clock games. At East Stroudsburg at Bloom, Lock Haven at Kutztown, of course, our homecoming game, uh, the night cap, if you will. The afternoon cap, uh, Gannon at California. Coach, I always ask you if sure. you're a fan, what, what's another game you would uh, keep an eye on if you're a fan of football in the PSAC? Yeah, that Edinburgh at, at Slippery Rock game. Obviously, Slippery Rock plays really well at home, but Edinburgh is a good football team, and when they can get it rolling offensively, you know, they're very dangerous. So obviously, that's a great game, and then you got – you know, two four and two teams in Clarion and, and Indiana going at it. So those are the two that, that I'd, I'd take a peek at there. But of course, uh, the only game that we really want to pay attention to is this Saturday at three o'clock, the homecoming game against Gannon. Uh, show up, go to the parade at noon, and then take the nice easy ride up to the stadium. Um, games at three o'clock. Uh, the parade will be live on CUTV Sports One. The game will be live on CUTV Sports One, the PSAC network, and also live on the radio on the uh, Radio FX app. Radio FX app. Um, for WCAL. So plenty of ways you can see the game, but the best way is to be in the stands Adams because stadium. it was rocking. It's been rocking all season. I mean, the, yeah. the, the family day atmosphere is great. The IEP game was great, and homecoming is always a great atmosphere. And I know you looked at the weather coach, said it's going to be like 65, sunny, no Easy. rain. Um, and then if that's not enough, stay afterwards for the Lone Star concert. I believe Chris Higby's opening for them. So 
Um, all I got to do is walk out of the stadium, find the giant stage, and get in front of it and listen to it. It's going to be a great day in California. Yeah, it will, and, and we need your support. You know, I think we're going to have a great alumni turnout. Students, you know, enjoy homecoming. Come on up to the stadium. Get your tailgates rolling. Uh, we're honoring the, the 1968 PSAC championship team as well as the 2008 PSAC championship team. So special day for, for our alumni to honor two former great teams. I think it's the 50th anniversary of the two of the 68 team and then honor one of the, the best teams in Cal history in the 08 team. So we're excited. You know, homecoming's a special time here. Our guys enjoy it, but we need your support. Come on out and support us, and, and it should be a great day in California. Coming out and support the team. And for all the information about the team or anything else, uh, go to calvalkins.com. Matt Kiefer and his staff do a wonderful job keeping everybody up to date. So, uh, Coach, we'll see you Saturday at 3 o'clock. Good luck this week, and we'll see you next week on The Gary Dunn Show. You're watching it right here on CUTV.